6 o'clock. Uh, welcome to the World Council's Planning Committee. Uh, my name is Stuart Kelly and I'm the Chair of the Committee. Could I ask, uh, as the beginning, that all mobile phones are turned off or to silent, please? Um, can I also please advise you that we will be webcasting this evening and the record will be retained on the Council website. The cameras are set to follow the microphones and to follow the proceedings. Now the applicant, the petitioners or agents do not wish to be filmed, please let this be known to me before you take your seat to speak. Members, please remember to use your microphones when you speak. My role is to ensure that the committee goes smoothly, having regards to procedure, behaviour and ethics. To explain to you who the rest of the people are, to my immediate right is the council solicitor, who will give advice to the committee on procedural or legal matters and where to arise, and the minute taker and webcasters. To my left are the council's planning officers, highways engineer and environmental health officer, who will present the applications this evening and provide any technical advice that may be required. Chair, I don't think the speakers are working this out of the room. Drive Colby, 
and item 17, West Ways, 16 Wingdale Road, West Carey. I will move all of those for site visits. <coughs> is that agreed by the committee? Very agreed. Members of the public, if everybody is here present for uh, the applications 10, dealing with the site of the Dell Fenton Court Road, 12, um, the development at that one old field drive, Peswell, 16, uh, the development at Roseland, 16 Cross Drive, Corby, or 17 <coughs> at Westway, 16 Lindale Road, West Kirby. Those have been deferred from tonight for a site visit. The site visit will take place Friday, 14th of June, and the masters will return to committee on the 20th of June. Yeah, before, before you move on, as spokesperson for um, our group, there's a number of our members find private site visits uh, a difficulty. So I know it's in your gift, but we'd ask you to try and reconsider that issue uh, in the future because a number of members have uh, specific work commitments on that day. I just need to raise that thing so that we can look at it. Um, so any members of the public that are here for those, site, for those items, that's sort of just site visits. Um, you don't have to stay. You don't have to leave. But if you wish to leave, please leave uh, uh, now. Arising from that, uh, a number of items on tonight's agenda have been withdrawn um, or deferred by the officers. Item, items 8 and 9, which both deal with West Kirby and Hoylake War Memorial, have been deferred uh, at the request of officers further information. And item 15, 31A Carbon Road Hull Lake, has been uh, withdrawn by the officers and it doesn't need to be here in the first place and will be determined and delegated their powers. So, <coughs> if any members of the public are here for 8 and 9, West Kirby Hull Lake Hall, Port Memorial, and 15, 31A um, Carbon Road Hull Lake, they're not to be discussed tonight. Chair. Uh, this application was the subject of a member's site visit in February this year. Planning Commission is sought for the erection of a two story restaurant with drive through, car parking, landscaping, and associated works. The site will be operated by McDonald's. The application represents a departure from the development plan. The site is allocated in the UDP as a primarily industrial area and sits at the entrance to the North Cheshire Trading Estate. Policy EM8 allows for uses falling within classes B1, B2 or B8. Whilst this policy clearly does not envisage uses other than those within B1, B2 or B8, this is a permissive policy and does not in itself include other uses in the primarily industrial area. 
Evidence has been produced that demonstrates that the site has been marketed extensively over a period of time for uses that fall within B1, B2 or B8 with no take-up and the site has sat empty for over 20 years. There has been a decline in the rate of development within the North, North Cheshire trading estate as a whole. Other uses falling outside of B1, B2 and B8 have also been allowed within this primarily industrial area, most notably the gym immediately south of the application site. It is considered that the proposed development would not irrevocably harm the primarily industrial area or the functions of the wider Cheshire trading estate, nor be in conflict with policy EM8 of the UDP. In terms of the potential impact on living conditions of nearby residents, the nearest residential properties are located to the east of the site on Derby Drive. These properties are separated from the application site by Brenton Way, and although the new restaurant would be visible from the rear of those houses, the nearest dwelling is a considerable distance away at 50 metres between the nearest dwelling and the closest part of the new restaurant. The inspector on an earlier refusal of planning permission concluded that the proposal would not cause harm to the living conditions of nearby residents, either through noise and disturbance or any other manifestations of the use proposed, and it's concluded that this current proposal similarly will not harm the immunities of local residents. The application is supported with a transport assessment, which has been considered in some detail by the Council's own highways engineers. The figures and details submitted within the assessment for traffic generation are considered to be a robust assessment. It has been concluded that the junctions of the A552 Woodchurch Road and Junction 3 of the M53 and the site access with Prenton Way would all operate within capacity if this development were approved. Earlier concerns around pedestrian and cyclist safety have been taken into consideration with these new proposals. The Section 278 agreement to include the provision of a Tootman crossing and high friction surfacing treatment along Brenton Way and other localised alterations to the highway are proposed. Detailed safety auditing has taken place and the highways engineers are satisfied that subject to these details and the conditions listed, that the development will not adversely impact on highway safety, including for pedestrians and cyclists. Notwithstanding the site's designation in the UDP for industrial use, both national and local planning policies are generally supportive of alternative uses for the site being brought forward, particularly having regard to the considerable period of time that the site has been vacant. The development will create new jobs, and the design and layout of the proposed development is appropriate for the area. It's considered that the application is acceptable and is recommended for approval. In relation to condition 13, additional wording should be inserted after the bullet point in reference to the SUDS report to read, for the avoidance of doubt, no surface water should connect to the public sewage system. Uh, there is a qualified petition of objection. Okay, so the lead petitioner here, and would the lead petitioner like to address the planning commission? Hello, you're right. Can I just, before I speak to these people, can I just have a show of hands who's from the Dale in our surrounding area? Just as a, as a way of seeing how many people are in deep concern about what's happening here. Um, my name's Andrew okay. Bennett. Sorry. I'm just stopping at the other. In fact, I was going to just ask you your name, Matt, before you get into your presentation, before we start the clock. Um, if you would, let us know your name and address. Okay, I'm Andy Bennett, I've got 140. Yeah, put the mic on. Yeah, I'm Andy Bennett, I live at home. Thank you. Uh, Andy Bennett, I live at 148 Early Drive. Thank you. So, you, you have five minutes um, to address us. Once you've finished your, your uh, presentation, I will ask you whether you would be prepared to take any questions of clarification on what you've just been said from members of this planning committee. Is that okay with you? Don't, so you don't have to take That's, uh, that's fine, yeah. yeah absolutely just, fine. Just on that. So, you have five minutes. Thank you. Um, obviously, on behalf of the local residents, my concern here is that 81 of us have already put in an opposition to this planning. Um, it's a deep concern that we have to come here today and it's not already been knocked back. There are a number of different areas that worry me. Some of them are around the social makeup of the area, some of them around the, the immediate litter concerns. I'll go through some of them. So jobs, first of all. 
65 positions are supposed to have been created through the development of this McDonald's. These will be 65 posts, lots of them on zero hour contracts, lots of them with minimal employee benefits, um, detracting from local posts on Woodchurch Road in small independent um, businesses that run there. So for each of the jobs that there was take up from in the McDonald's, there may be a decline in our local businesses, which is local people. Not people travelling from elsewhere to <coughs> take up their posts. Um, I'm also concerned about uh, the, the diet of young people in the area. We're in a, an area close to a number of primary schools and two big secondary schools that just sit just over the road from us. Now, you'll be aware that in the M53, across the M53, it's an east-west divide. There's a 10 year life expectancy difference from one side to the other. Slap bang in the middle of that, what are we going to have? A McDonald's. Addictive, it's, a, it's drawing a, um, young people to want to eat there, and it will have a negative and long lasting impact on our NHS um, and obviously our resources to deal with, with uh, people eating a lot of fast food. Uh, recent research in the Lancet suggested that eating fast food more than twice a week can be linked to rapid weight gain and increased chance of type 2 diabetes. With Nora stretched NHS, that is a real concern. Now for us as locals, Junction 3 is simply not suitable. It's not a suitable area. We have saw one motorbike fatality in recent years on that roundabout. There is already chaos at rush hour coming from Woodchurch Road and coming off uh, onto the roundabout and coming off the roundabout onto Woodchurch Road with a number of small accidents that take place on a regular occasion. Um, in terms of people accessing the site, our, our drive, the drive will be the main thoroughfare. It will come from a quiet community where the only people really using our path, our footpaths now are people accessing the gym to all of a sudden a heavy lot of foot traffic, increased litter. We'll also have increased deliveries coming along the back, um, articulated lorries, light pollution, sound pollution, um, exacerbated by the removal of trees on the sites also, which are doing a good job in terms of picking up carbon waste. Um, thinking about young people who are travelling to the area, from over the way on the Woodchurch Estate, we'll have people coming from by Woodchurch High School, crossing the main busy roads. We'll have people trying to come across the M53, coming across Woodchurch Road. We've got a couple of footbridges, but they are not enough to deal with the kind of traffic that we will be seeing. Antisocial behaviour is a real concern for us. You only have to go to a number of McDonald's. There are actually three within a five mile radius already. You only have to go to the McDonald's late on in the evening to see that there's antisocial behaviour in the area. There's gangs of youngsters hanging around, creating litter, creating noise. Now, obviously, as a resident, I really want to make sure that you hear our plea and you take us into your consideration. Um, I'm aware that we're up against the big corporation here, but really this is our local community. And for so many of us to be here tonight, and for so many of us to have already objected, it shows it's a real deep-seated concern. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do any members have any questions that they want to ask the petition at this, this point? It's fairly clear what we said of it. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. I wonder, is there a representative for the applicant who wishes to speak?
Today we have five minutes um, to, uh, to, to address us at, at the end. If, 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 you, uh, if, if you want, uh, we can accept any questions or clarification for members. Sure. I've um, also got some colleagues um, from the planning and uh, the relations should, should the questions arise on those issues as well. So but I will be out there as well to answer those questions. First, I'd like to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to your committee today. Thank you. Uh, I want to use this opportunity to provide some context about how I operate my restaurants and add some detail to the report before you, including how McDonald's has addressed specific concerns regarding the closing. We've worked closely with officers to provide them with all the information needed to work out, complete the recommendation. Uh, we've also considered letters of objection and petition. Uh, we've listened and taken into account those concerns and addressed these in the final proposal. With regards to litter, uh, we work really hard around surrounding areas, around certainly around our restaurants, and we've got a very good track record in doing so. Staff at our restaurants carry out a minimum of three daily cleanups, picking up all litter, not just McDonald's packaging, and we do extended regular uh, traffic walk, uh, litter walks extended outside the site as well. We're also a founding member of uh, Keep Britain Tidy's Love Where You Live campaign, under which over 380 community litter picks have already taken place this year. In terms of my restaurants, all three of our restaurants have purchased and sponsored Wirrapurra Council litter bins in each of those locations, so we're committed to making sure that that relationship continues. Um, We've also done lots of cleanups, um, and some of the councillors have actually been part of those cleanups, particularly in Birkenhead. Um, we continue to do those as well. All of our restaurants also have five star EHO rating, and that's obviously something we take very, very seriously. Antisocial behaviour, it's absolutely inherent. We are part of the community, and we really see it is so important for us. Customers, staff, and our neighbours are really, really important to our business. When I get a franchise, it's for 20 years, so it's a long term commitment, not here and now and disappear tomorrow. So, we ensure our restaurants are safe, welcoming, and responsible environments, which is why we take antisocial behaviour extremely seriously. As an example, I work very closely with a hive in Birkenhead. Uh, not just volunteering the time for getting you know, job courses, etc., but also on the cleanups and work with your people to make sure that we minimise and work very closely with <coughs> antisocial behaviour. Um, they've also, those youngsters, have also participated in a lot of those cleanups as well. We also work in collaborative living with antisocial behaviour teams from the council, also with local police, shouldn't and as and when any other antisocial behaviour does arise, so we can nip it in the bud very, very quickly. On behalf of the specific boy, boy races uh, concerns, we, that has certainly not been my experience. We operate in Bromborough, a 24 hour drive through, and if there is an issue, then our CCT soon picks that up and it's quickly eradicated. So it's not really been a problem. All the traffic concerns uh, have been addressed um, with the highways and the green. And there is only going to be an 8%, and it's quite a robust study when it comes down to 8% um, even on a Saturday lunchtime, will be additional trips to that site. Danger to pedestrians, um, we've agreed to put in uh, a new Toucan Crossing, which has been provided on Brent's Way. Uh, the deliveries, uh, again, that has all been covered as well. You have one minute. Thank you. Um, the impact on um, uh, emergency vehicles, the roundabout is overseen by Highways England and the Highways Authority raise no concerns as well. And uh, therefore there's plenty of capacity to use. In conclusion, it may be useful to know that, as I say, it's a 20 year term promoting long term commitment to building and maintaining positive local relationships. I'd certainly continue to do that. I also play an active role with Birkenhead Bid. Um, as again, as a business uh, advisor and partner. And obviously, any, any groups like that in Prince will be more than happy to help out with. And um, obviously,
obviously following substantial negotiations with officers I trust the proposal in the form of the NF support. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you. Any members have any questions or clarification we'd like to ask the stage? Two world councillors have indicated that they'd like to address us. I don't mind who was one of the green books and sound. Councillor Norwood.
my name is Councillor Tony Norbury. I represent the Ward of uh, Prenton. Uh, thank you very much, Chair, for the opportunity. I'm just going to touch on, uh, just thanking Andy really for uh, his presentation, but he, he covered quite a lot comprehensively. So I'm just going to touch on a couple of aspects, one of the ones uh, Councillor Lewis brought up in his questions there, you know. This is a restaurant, a two-storey restaurant that is going to be on the motorway spur. It may as well be a service station. You're going to get all sorts of traffic coming off the motorway, articulated lobbies and all the rest of it coming off that motorway to use this restaurant. It's on a very, very narrow, um, Trent Way is a very narrow piece of road there. You've got a pelican crossing that's going to be installed. That is going to create a backlog of traffic going back onto the spare. Believe me, that's what's going to happen. I, I went to the site visit and it was clear to me that that, that that is a very dangerous situation. Not only that, is these diesel lorries that are going to be using this and the access of vehicles that obviously McDonald's couldn't come up with a figure, you know, this ballpark figure of 8% or whatever it is. Um, and it won't be the locals who will be using that car, 48 car, car park. It'll be, as I say, lobbies coming off that motorway and it being used as a service station. That's why I put it there, because it's going to attract um, people coming off that motorway. Just think of yourselves as the residents of the Dairy Estates who are already putting up with massive CO2 problems uh, causing their environment to be polluted. The trees that are uh, on there now, as, 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 as rightly said, will soak up some of that CO2 emissions. But I urge the committee to do some reports on the CO2 emissions that are already in that area and they must be absolutely over the top of any metered um, respect to that. And the additional traffic, which is going to be, I suggest, well in excess of 8%, as Council Lewis said, 8% of what, you know. And that is going to be um, diesel vehicles and it's going to increase that CO2 emissions and give these people living in, the, in that environment health problems we're moving towards uh, protecting our environment, and that doesn't just mean not building on the green belt, it means protecting the environment from pollution uh, that we're going to be experiencing on this. So I want the committee to do measurements of the CO2 emissions as we stand now and predict what the CO2 emissions are going to be in the future, because the residents shouldn't have to put up with that. And it's not only the CO2 emissions, it's also the light pollution, it's also the noise pollution, and it's also all the other things that Andy said that are going to be brought to these people uh, who are living on the daily uh, in relative peace at the moment. The other point I wanted to make uh, regarding um, the employment, this land is designated for industrial use, and we're moving towards saying, great, it's, it's industrial use, okay, it hasn't been used for 20 years, but these jobs that are going to be created are zero hour contract jobs. I've spoken to McDonald's on my representation for the residents. Zero hour contract jobs, not all of them, but that's how McDonald's employ people. I've asked McDonald's to um, secure people's employment and have a proper employment policy which involves trade unions. It's proved that trade unions representing the workforce increase the health and safety of that workforce and also the terms and conditions. McDonald's have said to me that they do not recognise trade unions. They would not let any trade union officials on the site to recruit members into the trade union to represent them and improve their terms and conditions. So, um, I'll, I'll tell you what, Mr. Mr. Um, Paul Griffiths, who, who represented the, to the meeting, he, he will get used to me and other trade union officials because we will be on that site recruiting um, the workforce into trade unions because I think every single employer, employee has the, should have the chance to join a trade union. When I spoke to McDonald's, they told me 
that their employment situation, the way they employ people is X, Y, and Z. So I'll put it to them, why at McDonald's throughout this country, their workers are on strike at the moment, in Manchester and other parts of the country, that's how happy they are with their employment contract. And that's, I, I, would, I would say one of the reasons for that is that they're, they're not recognising uh, quality jobs, quality employment, and they're not recognising uh, the right for their employees to join the trade union and improve their terms and conditions. Zero hour contracts are a plight on, on our people and driving them into poverty, food banks and homelessness. Thank you.
that we are as welcoming visitors to the McDonald's heartland, rather than a locality originally known more for its cultural interest and natural beauty. For nearly two years now, I have been campaigning with 30 state residents against this proposed McDonald's outlet. And while collecting petition signatures back in August 2017, and in all my subsequent door knocking, I've only ever encountered three or four residents out of over 200 households who are in favour of the application or neutral towards it. I feel it would be very unwise of the planning committee to approve this application in the face of such strong local opposition, where recent local government legislation urges councils to be guided by local residents' views in shaping their community. Councils on the planning committee should have the courage to turn down this application on the basis that there's a sixth McDonald's restaurant in Wirral would bring only harm and no benefit to the community. Scenarios, uh, the site access in the Prenton Way arm exit onto the roundabout 